Hi, everybody. I'm Jeremiah Reiner, and thank you again for joining us for a brand new episode of Deeply Rooted. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Deeply Rooted. Thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate all the support and encouragement so far that we've been getting from everybody. Uh, We appreciate the prayers that we've had so far. Thank you so much for tuning in to all the broadcasts before. Really excited about today's program. Been thinking about this for quite some time. We're very privileged to have a good friend of uh, my family, myself as well, and a good brother in Christ. His name is Bill Gillum. Uh, We've also got with us Brother Aaron Edens from Crossway Baptist Church. Aaron's been gracious enough to be able to set this idea up and we've got veterans day coming up around the corner and we've asked bill to be here with us for a great interview talking about his life and testimony so we're going to go ahead and kick that off uh bill appreciate you coming on to the podcast today thank you so much for being here you're welcome i'm glad to be here all right we're going to start back all the way and you and i have something in common that i didn't realize until i heard this but you grew up in manville virginia and yes, I'm glad I did. to know that you grew up in Manville, Virginia. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the big, uh, big Manville. Yes. What was that like with your family growing up there? Well, our family, we actually, when we lived out there, we lived next to Smith's Chapel, which some people probably knows, and we had a house there that we rented off of uh, Emmett Bellamy. That's where we lived at, and uh, we lived there for a few years, and I, my dad passed away, and uh, then we moved to Gate City. But it was good out there. It was good. We was on a little farm, and uh, it, it was enjoyable for a young man about nine years old. <laughs> yeah. So it was good. It was real good. Now, your uh, your mother actually became a widow at a very young age. What did you and your siblings do to kind of help pick up in that area? Well, what we done, actually, Mom, Dad had insurance and everything, and when he passed away, she got money. that she We moved to town right down here. Uh, just down the street from the church here a little bit beside of my aunt and uh, mom bought a house off her and me and my sister which was at home uh, moved out here when we was nine years old in 1959 that's when we moved out here and we tried to help with mom mom had to go to work because you know you lost your income and you have to do what you have to do to support the kids and well I take it back there was three of us my little sister and my older sister was uh, we were all coming out here together. Now, your experience as church goes as a young boy and a teenager, what was that like? Well, before I got saved, Mom used to take us to church up here to West End Baptist. Uh, She started with us up here when we was about nine years old. I remember going to uh, Bible school and everything in the basement when there was no Mm up-level of West End Baptist Church. It was just a basement. That's all there was. And... uh, we enjoyed it through the summer, and we'd go to Bible school there. And then as you got older and everything, uh, you understand how things is. As you get older, you don't want to go do stuff. Right. So I didn't. I quit going. Mm-hmm. And so, But uh, that it was enjoyable. I can't complain about it. Now, when you grew up, uh, I've read and heard stories that you were quite the athlete. Um, <laughs> well. <laughs> what... Uh, your career at Gay City High School, how would you describe that, and what sports did you play? Well, I guess I was fire, and I played three sports. Mm-hmm. I played uh, a track, and then I played uh, baseball, and I played basketball. I played them all three for about either three or four years, all of them. And had pretty successful seasons? Yeah, we done pretty good. Uh, we, on the track, we went to the state and we won some medals up there and everything. And baseball, we won some games. And then on the basketball, we we done pretty good one year there. We uh, ended up a season before we went to state playoffs. We was 23-0. and 0. Mm. Wow. And so we done pretty good. Coach Rickers, he was a good coach. Yeah. He had mediocre players and a good coach. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, now, was there we had any good. thought about playing on past that, maybe college or – we didn't really think about it back then yeah. and didn't have, well, didn't have the money to go to college and mm-hmm. I wasn't that, that good. Yeah. You know what I mean? To get a scholarship, there wasn't a lot of people coming in here looking at us, but we had some pretty good players. 
Good. That was better than me. I'll put it that way. We had, uh, I mentioned a few of them, Darwin Pippen, his brother Fred. Darwin, mm-hmm. uh, he was good. He set some records in school. Yeah, right. You, y'all remember yeah. Darwin Pippen, and he, he was good. Yeah. Now, 1965, a uh, very important year in your life. Can you walk us through what happened on that specific day? Your sister, you invited a minister over to share the gospel at your house. What was that like? Well, before he came, I, I guess me and my brother uh, and mom, we were there at the house and everything. And uh, we was outside. Mother was talking uh, to a gentleman that mom used to date and everything. And uh, we were all outside there. And here come my sister and uh, the preacher walking down the road. And I didn't know, you know, I didn't know for sure uh, who he was. Personally, I didn't, you know, mm-hmm. I hadn't seen him in a long time and everything, but I, I didn't really recognize him. But he got to talking and got to preaching, uh, I guess, to the gentleman that was in the car. And me and my brother was kind of standing back here in the back, and he got to talking and preaching. And uh, my brother looked at him and he said, it's not for that fellow, it's for me. <laughs> and that's my brother Bob and right. uh, then uh, he said let's go in the house so my sister took me in there also and uh, they talked with my brother Bob and uh, he confessed Christ and accepted him as his mm. Lord and Savior and uh, my sister had me over there and uh, she's got to talking to me and uh, I said yes I'll take the Lord as my Savior and I accepted him and that's the greatest day in my life right. the greatest one I'll ever have and Never will surpass it mm-hmm. because, uh, well, the one people knows when they get saved, that's what it's about. Right. Right? Everybody knows the same experience. Everybody has the same experience. Yeah. I mean, some are different a little bit, but the basic, the same experience, everybody has them because it's it's from God. Yeah. And if you don't get that, you ain't got it. That's all I can say. Yeah. I mean, I hate to say that out, but uh, that's all it is. Uh, the Lord take care of you. And what I'm changes did you that. see during that time in your life? Well, <laughs> the old things become new, <laughs> right. and the old things passed away. You know, I mean, everything changed in your life when you accept the Lord. Even though when you're, I was 16 years old mm. when uh, I got saved, and uh, me and my brother both, and. Uh, it's just something that um, it changes you all the way around. And I got to talking to different ones even the next day when I went to talk to some of the other guys. They they already knew it, and I hadn't told them. Is they said, right? yeah, something happened to you last night, didn't you? I said, yeah, I got saved. Mm. And I talked to them and tell them they need to, need to do that also. And, uh, of course, some of them's already passed that I talked to and everything. And mm. uh, uh, I, it's just been good over all these years. I mean, uh, that's all I can say. It's been good. Yeah. It has been good. And not long after that, uh, you had the privilege to meet your future wife. You all were attending church together. And by 1968, uh, you all were married. You had a good job. And what most people would probably call an ideal life at that time, particularly here in the United States. What do you remember about those good days? Well... It was a good day when I met her, too. We were going to church, <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, it, and it's been good for over 50 years. We've been together for the last, counting this last, uh, last year, it was 50 years. It was 51 years this year. No, I take it back. 50 years this year mm-hmm. when we were married, because we were married in 1968. Cool. So in 2018, and I guess that gave us 50 years. And uh, it's been good. Yeah, she's a She's a good lady. And I guess if it hadn't been for her, uh, a lot of the things she's helped me with, that uh, I probably wouldn't have made through. Maybe I wouldn't have made things through because uh, she's a she's a strong lady, mm-hmm. and uh, she's good. Fifty and, years of testimony in itself. And, yes, uh, I'm thankful for her today. Yeah. I'm really thankful for her. A fantastic lady. Now, 1969, you received a letter from the United States government that would change your life and put you on a different path, obviously, than you expected. Can you describe to us how you and your family handled that draft notice? Well, we'd been married. Uh, we got married in 1968, and then in uh, 1969, we'd, I got it 
in February, a little before that. I'd done been to Roanoke and all that and everything. It got that real nice letter where it said, greetings. Mm -hmm. <laughs> greetings, you have been inducted into the armed forces. Yeah. So, I mean, wow. everybody gets that. It's all the same. It says greetings to you. And uh, I don't have the papers to you. It probably should have kept it, but I never did. Uh, I lost it along the way. But, mm. but uh, it, was, it was concerning. Because, like I said, uh, there was things going on that uh, you kind of had a little bit of a little bit of fear of. Right, I mean, certainly. I'll be honest with you, there was there was fear there because you didn't know for sure what was going to be passing your way. I didn't really un you know didn't didn't know what was going to come about because you were just an army and you didn't have no other say so. They done to you what they wanted to do. You, you didn't have no other choice, but it was uh, it was different. Mm -hmm. It was really different. It it it, uh, it it hit you pretty good. I mean, you know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. uh, it it dwells on you because you don't know what you're facing. Right. You know because you don't know what the next day may come about. You just don't really know when you get inducted in there and you got to leave your wife and you go in with a bunch of men that you're same age at. Uh, 19 years old or whatever you know and uh, uh, it's just I mean 19, 20 I guess I was 20 years old when I got that and uh, somewhere around that I was 48 I uh, got it in 69 so I guess I'd, I'd been 20 that 21 that year and uh, but it's it, it was it was an experience it was when I went in and then I had my orders to go to a certain place and I got to, you know, I'm thankful that I made it back right. more I did, I'll be promised. How did, the, how did the church that you were at, how did they kind of rally around you and support you during that time? Well, it was good to me. The people were good. They did a lot of praying mm -hmm. and to be honest with you, if it wasn't been for prayer, I wouldn't have been here. There was a lot of people prayed for me. Yeah. I would not have been here. Absolutely. Because, uh, uh, Prayer changes things. Yes, it does. I mean, God, a lot of times, He'll let you have experiences and let you go through things, but uh, He will answer things if people, enough people, I believe, ask their petitions yes. for your safety and different things. I believe He, I believe He can take care of it. I mean, that's just that's my personal opinion now, and uh, but I'm just thankful to be back yeah. alive. Well, we're yeah, glad to have you here with us today. I'm <laughs> thankful to be yeah. back alive. Yeah. I sure am. Now, you spent, I believe it was eight weeks in basic and then nine more weeks in more advanced training. Yes. And then you eventually served in the infantry division, I believe, in the Army. Yes. Is that correct? Yes, I did. I went over overseas. And the, uh, I was in the, uh, to begin with, it was the Miracle Division, which I went into uh, over in Da Nang. And yep. they sent us over, of course, uh, yeah, everybody gets a little relief before they go over. They give you two weeks at home, and then you got to go. I went into uh, Fort Lewis and Washington, Seattle, Washington is where I transferred out, and they picked us up from there, and we went to a different place, and we landed, I think, in, um, I can't remember whether it was, uh, anyway, we went to a different place and landed another place and rested there for a while. Then we went straight on to Vietnam and went on to uh, Da Nang, our, the base there going into right. Vietnam, okay. on the lower part of Vietnam. Now, did you ever make your way into any other countries on your tour while you were there? Uh, well, only stopped like uh, not any other. We didn't stop in Japan. We stopped in Hawaii going over and things like that. They'd take us, you know, different routes. Some went Alaska and went around that way. Some went Hawaii and that way. But as uh, far as uh, any countries, no. Not as I was going over. Right. No. Did you ever make your way into maybe Laos or anybody else there uh, while you were there? Well, you just, you were out in the field and, uh, uh, but I wasn't there that long. Right. To like a lot of guys were. I was wounded before I got to experience other things because you got a little relief after maybe three, four months. They'd give you what they call R&R, &R, rest and relaxation. Mm -hmm. And they would give you a little break to get you kind of orientated out of the situation yeah. that you were in. Now, you just alluded to something uh, that I was going to follow up on. You'd spent 
really only about a month, I guess, yes. there in Vietnam, and yes. then you faced your personal situation there. Um, what happened in that that you were wounded? Well, uh, it was just a situation where we were out, and uh, we are on a mission, and then all of a sudden, there was just a big boom, and a lot of people around us, um, some didn't make it, and some made it, and I'm thankful I was one of the ones that made it, right. and I'm very thankful of that. Now, you were wounded in your hand, I believe is correct. Well, I was wounded all over. Right. <laughs> I've got wounds in my foot. I've got wounds in my legs. I've got wounds in my stomach. I've mm-hmm. got wounds in the elbow. I've got wounds in my hand. I've got them all over. Now, yeah. correct me if I'm wrong on this, but were you not able to help other people during that time? Just beside yourself? Yeah, I did help a guy. He was, he was. I thought maybe worse than what I was. He, mm-hmm. but uh, uh, I helped him. Well, that's in my book. That's called a hero. Well, <laughs> and I hope people understand you just, that. You just do what you have to do in certain right. situations, and that's just that's just the way. Yeah. It is. Well, that's the definition yeah. of courage, I believe. But now you were, I believe, taken to a hospital in Japan. Is that correct? Uh, yes, after they took me out of the field hospital there in Vietnam, they right. uh, took stuff and they, and they uh, took the metal out, what they could get, right. and uh, then they sent me on to Japan, and I spent a couple of weeks in Japan, Okay. and they sewed me back up and sent me back to uh, Bullmack Army Hospital in Fort Bragg, North Carolina. How long was it before you were able to notify Janet and the rest of the family of what had happened? Uh, well... The uh, Red Cross lets them know, okay, because the army and everything lets the Red Cross know. And but in Japan, I got to call her. When I got to Japan, mm-hmm. I got to call her. Okay, and I called them and talked to them, and uh, that's when I let them know that I was fine. You know, I I was fine. I was able to speak, mm-hmm. so <laughs> I was I was fine. Yeah. I'm sure she was. Oh yeah, very yeah. worried though. Oh yeah, law, yeah. yeah. Well, she was. I would have been too. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, she was worried to death. But, right. uh, I mean, I was fine. I mm-hmm. mean, I didn't have all my parts and things, but uh, you know, I was fine. Yeah, Lord definitely watched over. Though. Yes, yeah. if it hadn't been for the Lord, I wouldn't have been here. Yeah. Now I'm, I'm being honest with you. I mean, I'd have been dead. Yeah. Now you mentioned you came back to Fort Bragg in North Carolina, and then. I think you spent the remainder of your military time in Texas. Is that right? Well, I stayed in the hospital about six months. Is that in Japan? No. In Old Mac Army Hospital North, okay. in North Carolina. And I went through another operation over there. And uh, that didn't help. It was just trying to correct some of the situations right. that I had on my hand and everything. And it didn't do what they wanted it to do. And uh, uh, I spent about six months there. Now, what did you do while in Texas, though, after that? Well, in Texas, I didn't go back to my original MOS, and uh, which was in the infantry. I went back into a trucking outfit, which was uh, the Hell on Wheels 2nd Armored Division mm-hmm. uh, in, in Fort Hood, Texas. I went out and went into it to work and be a truck driver or okay. a little Jeep driver. And uh, that's what I could do rather than going back to the infantry. Mm-hmm. Right. And uh, I spent that rest the remainder of my time out there. Now, a lot of people I've spoke to and read about, of course, but um, different in every situation, I guess. Did you face any kind of criticism or personal hatred when you came back to the United States? Well, no, I didn't, see, because I came back on a 137, big old uh, C-130, rather, mm-hmm. uh, and they brought me back to the hospital. Where the other guys were coming into the mm-hmm. airports and right. everything, they were lined up out there, spitting on them and everything mm-hmm. else. And yeah. uh, I know some guys that you know that when they come through there, a lot of times they would take them and ask them before they went out that they would change into civilian clothes so that they wouldn't have the situation. Mm-hmm. I talked to a fellow the other day, and that's that's. Because I, I was, I was privileged. I didn't, I didn't face that. Yeah, I didn't have to face it. Now, after you came home, um, I guess 
a return to normalcy as, as best as anybody, I guess, could. But now you uh, face difficulties and setbacks like anybody else. Life is life sometimes, but and some of it unexpected. But uh, I believe it was 1979, God opened a huge door uh, for you and Janet, and you all were blessed with a little girl by the name of Amy. Uh, yes, we were, and it was a good blessing. Right. And it's still a blessing today, and she's blessed us like... Uh, uh, I guess with children, she blessed us with right. three grandchildren, two boys and a girl, and they're wonderful kids. Like anybody, any grandpa says they're wonderful kids. <laughs> Same way with uh, any children you have, they're wonderful children. Right. So, and uh, you know that too, brother. So, yes. it, it, they're wonderful kids, regardless of what they do, mm-hmm. because you can you can teach them all you want to, and uh, still they can, you know. Have situations, right? But she's a blessed lady. Absolutely, she's blessed, and the Lord blessed us with that. And because it was Him that done it, and uh, I'm very thankful for it. Yeah, very thankful today. Now we were speaking of blessings. We were able to celebrate just a few days ago one of those grandchildren, uh, your middle one, Andrew, gave his life to the Lord. I'm sure that was a (laughs) big day for everybody. Yeah, the other night uh, he called us, and uh, he called Janet. Mm-hmm. His grandmama, or his nana, that's what they call her, <laughs> nana all the time, and uh, said, uh, guess what, nana? She said, what? I said, I got saved, nana. And, and she started taking a fit, so, you know, <laughs> and of course I did too, and I mm-hmm. was very thankful. Of course, his, before that, he'd been, his uh, girlfriend had been talking to him, and they'd been talking and everything, and she told him, said, you're going to have to go talk to your mom and dad. So he had to go home and talk to mom and dad, and they prayed with him, and he accepted mm-hmm. the Lord, and uh, that's when he called us and let us know. Praise so God. we were we were very thankful, right. very yes. very thankful. Yeah, that's the kind of news you want. Yes, yeah. he was just a little bit older than when I was when I first when I yeah. got saved, mm-hmm. and so, but it was wonderful. Yeah. It was really wonderful. Now you've had let's see years of faithful service as a dad, <laughs> and a husband, and a grandfather, but also still. I was talking to you about this the other day. You're still involved with the American Legion, I believe. Is that correct? Yes. And what are you doing there with them and and locally? What's going on? Well, locally, uh, well, I'm in with a bunch of uh, guys that went through the Army. Some of them were uh, were 80-some years old, and they're still doing uh, the uh, funerals, the the color guard, the honor Mm -hmm. guard. Mm -hmm. They've done over 200 funerals already this year wow. Mm, wow. probably about two five or two seven they've already done that many this year and they do it and i'm just a little help with them uh, i try to help in any way i can to support them i don't go to the i mean i've been to some of the the uh, some of the uh, occasions with the funerals and everything but i've never participated in the honor guard right but they do and there's about 12 or 15 of them that uh, the, from different places, Kingsport, Gate City, some of them live in uh, Dungannon, and back over in there and come and they, they travel. And mm-hmm. they've got a bus of their own. We have a bus with the American Legion, and we use it to travel far. And uh, so uh, it's, a, it's, a good, it's a good thing. Right. I mean, they do stuff for, well, they do stuff for the, uh, uh, the kids. We give scholarships. Uh, each year to every school, uh, the high school, just wow. the, just the graduates, we give them a thousand bucks. That's pretty good. We, yeah. we give them a thousand dollars, and uh, uh, we had a meeting last night, and we give to um, well, we give to the Rotary Club, we give to little leagues. Uh, what money we get? Like we go down to food uh, food line, food city, uh, once a year I mean, for two days. We ask. We just sit out there and we got a sign showing what uh, all that goes to the American mm-hmm. Legion does and everything, and it's for the kids of Scott County. We give back to the Scott Countyans. Right. We don't put it anywhere else, but it stays right here, and we help with that. And uh, uh, that's just and they're a bunch of good guys. They're really a bunch of good guys, yeah. and uh, they're just getting older. And it'd be nice if we had some younger guys in there, but it just. It's just not the way it is. But anyway, that they're good, and they yeah. do a good job, and they take care of a lot of things, and that's what Legion Field is named, 
Legion. Because mm-hmm. okay. American Legion gave a bunch of money back in 19... Really? From what I understand, 1964 and 65, when they were building it. And they gave money to start on part of it. That's what I understand now. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've been told that. Right. I never heard it from, you know, personally someone that did it, mm-hmm. but... Uh, uh, they gave money to start the Legion Field. Well, speaking of good guys, I want to shake the hand of a good guy. <laughs> and I appreciate you coming in I'm shaking and taking the good time. One too. Well, I thank you for that. We, uh, we appreciate you coming in and taking time out of your day. I know you got uh, lots of things you're doing. You told me a minute ago your, your best job ever right now is retirement. So. <laughs> It's the best one I've ever had. Yeah. I'll have to say that. And I'm and sure I, it is. I'm very yeah. thankful for it and thankful I've got enough to thank the Lord I've even got enough to, you know, what I want to eat or if I need to do a little something or if somebody needs something. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've I've got enough to I can spread it around a little bit. Yeah. And that's what we try to do. And I'm thankful that. Well, Bill, we appreciate you being on the program today. and. Hopefully you'll be able to share this with other people if you're listening right now. Again, you can go to our YouTube channel. They're on Deeply Rooted. Uh, also, you can check us out on Facebook as well. I'm going to be right back to close up with some things here with Brother Aaron Edens for Crossway Baptist and share some things with you to tie in here as Brother Bill spoke really well about what it's like to have loyalty and character and what real service to Jesus Christ looks like. So again, until next time, God bless you all and thank you. All right, we're back with uh, some closing announcements here with Deeply Rooted. Thanks again to our brother Bill Gillum for an excellent interview and, and a great testimony there. We've got brother Aaron Edens here from Crossway Baptist Church. Uh, no shame here. He is a good uh, family relative, <laughs> a cousin, uh, but also a, a fantastic pastor in this area. And Aaron was kind enough to actually bring this idea to me about interviewing Bill. And I wanted to bring him in to close out here and talk a little bit about uh, Bill's testimony and, and really how that applies to our life today. Thank you, Jeremiah. I was reminded, as uh, Bill shared his experience, I was reminded of Psalm 73, 1. And the psalmist said, Truly God is good to Israel, even to as such as are of a clean heart. In the remainder of that psalm, he talks about bad things happening to good people. But what you have to remember while you read that psalm is the first verse. Truly God is good. I think the character and nature of God is misunderstood. God did not cause the Vietnam War. God did not cause men and women to be separated and families to be divided. And God did not cause the wounds and the the terrible things that happened. God didn't cause that. The ultimate cause of all of that was sin. And sin came from long ago when the first man and woman rebelled against God. Sin entered into the world, and the Bible tells us in Romans chapter 5, death entered by sin. And so we live in a fallen world, with fallen circumstances all around us. And in the Bible, in the book of Genesis, we read about Joseph. Joseph suffered many, many terrible downsets. His family turned against him. He was sold into slavery. He wound up in prison. He was forgotten about. And on and on we go. Joseph was a good man, but bad things happened to him. God didn't cause any of that. But at the end of Joseph's life, as his brethren came to him in Genesis chapter 50, They thought for certain that Joseph would kill them. But Joseph told them this, What you meant for evil, God meant for good. And that doesn't mean God caused it. It means God changed it. And you know, that's what God does. He changes things. He changed Bill's life. He changed Jeremiah's life. He changed my life. And if you'll turn to him, he'll change your life too. You see, he specializes in taking bad things and turning them into good. Call on him today, and he'll save you by the asking. Amen. Thank you, Aaron. Appreciate you wrapping that up for us today. And again, uh, as he said, simply put, Jesus Christ is the answer. And we hope you find that today. Um, If you like 
to ask any questions. If you'd like to reach out to us again, we'd appreciate you doing that. You can reach out to us on our Facebook page there through Messenger. Again, that's Deeply Rooted. You can also find us on our YouTube channel at Deeply Rooted as well. We'd appreciate your involvement with that. And again, if you'd like to share that with others, friends and family, we'd really appreciate it. This is certainly not for profit. We're here to help people and we're here to point people to Christ and lift him up. And so until next time, we appreciate you listening in. God bless you all and hope you have a fantastic week.